times people haven't got time to just working horses the, you know, the most important thing when you bring you, you bring them in and give them a feed and then they might any horse mustn't be worked uh, hopefully for at least an hour after it's had its feed because they've got very small stomachs and uh, you'll give them colic and horses can't cope with pain so they uh, apart from uh, they they can die very easily from colic and most colic problems are man management somebody's done something stupid some human very few colics are induced in them and if you're suspicious the horse has got colic Always warn the horse before you're going to, just don't suddenly walk up to it and touch it. Always warn them, pat them, talk to them so they know where you are. And if you put your ear here, you can hear if their tummy's rumbling. Now if it's rumbling, then you're all right. If it's silent and you're suspicious that they've got colic because they're looking round at their tummies and pawing and that sort of thing well um, and then you can't hear anything well you better get the vet a bit quick and wonder what stupid blasted thing you've done as well right now this she's losing her coat her winter coat now but if you've not got time to brush them all over make absolutely sure that where the collar goes and and the pad if they're in the cart is clean so that it's comfy you wouldn't want to walk 10 miles with grit in your shoes you see so you make absolutely sure that that's clean if you haven't got time to do all over and uh, that's what you do so and then I'll show you the other important thing you must do before you go out. Very gentle. Hey, thank you. You good girl. Oh, such a good girl. Right, so that's just do her. And the essential place is down her shoulder. And we get him brushed off down his shoulder. Because he's still growing, and he'll be four years old in May, and he's far. He's a full brother to Lupin, who's now ten this year. And the reason he looks, she looks nice and rounded, is that he's like a a, a, t a late teenage man you know tend to be all gangly and um you know he will he'll furnish they call it furnishing uh, as he muscles up i reckon it takes about two years for them to muscle up completely you know a reasonable amount of work all the time but I mean, it's just impossible. I can't reach anything. You wait till we try and get the harness on. Oh. Oh, let's show you on the seat. And once more, you see, just warn them you're here. 
just touch them there. No, stand still, darling. Now, what I've got here is a solution of formaldehyde. It's like swimming pool cleaner. Um, if uh, you wouldn't do this every day, but you'd, I would reckon I would do, I'd do it once a week. Um, and you'll sh I'll show you why. Foot, darling. Now, you hold the foot like that. Keep yourself tight into the body, so if they were to thrash about, um, you wouldn't get quite so hurt. Always put the hoof pick in and drag it away from you. Now, this is the same thing. See, there's a stone in there. You see? Now, that is why we're cleaning their feet out. So you can't expect them in another one. To go to work, you wouldn't want to run about pulling a heavy load with stones in your shoes. And so, oh blast, you mustn't get that on your hands. It's a diluted, I think people use purple spray. That's as good as well, but this is a bit old fashioned. Now what happens is in here, if you can get a close up, what is, it can get a bit buggy, a bit like athlete's foot. So, the easiest way, it'd be jolly side easy if I'd fill this up first. Darling, don't. So I don't get it on myself. And I'd only do this once a week. But what if you go to work, clean their feet out and clean their shoulders. Right, that just soaks in and it hardens the foot and kills the bugs. Oh. Oh, this is an old syringe, obviously without the needle on it. And makes it so I don't get it all over myself. Right, that's looping done. Um, you can. No, I don't want to pick your foot up, sorry. And now we do Leo. Now they're due uh, for, to be reshod again. No, darling, come here. Foot. No, foot. No! Now he's not, of course he's younger, and he's not as well, but hey, so. Um, he's getting much better. You are a good boy, yes. Oh. Yes, you are a good boy. No, no, ah. <laughs> Well, uh, <clears throat> as, you, as you can see, we're a thousand feet up on Dartmoor, and it's very, it can be very damp and inclement. And when I first came down, all the harness got green, covered in green mould from end to end. So, as this is a, a Devon Long house, and the animals were kept in this end of the house and English Heritage won't allow you to convert it. Not that I wanted to convert it to a house type of thing, but I wanted somewhere for the harness. They've allowed me to build this harness room in this end and eventually we want to be able to stall the horses in here, but in, in the other bit. Um, and what I wanted to show you here was that I've got a, a, I've, also I've got a radiator to keep the harness warm um, I've got my old twin tub for washing blankets and stuff and then down here we've got the old uh, sink and um, for doing the harness and then here um, I think this is a very good idea for any of you 
making harness rooms for hanging all your working gear on and then we've got all the other on those traditional uh, um, saddle bra brackets there but this is this is a good idea but it is most important to be able to get your collars dry and so on and there's one other thing I'll show you now which you might not uh, we might not see later uh, uh, I've got the instead of sweat rugs we've got these which are a type of modern sweat rug and when they come back in they wear these until they're dry and I stand them in so that they don't get chilled when they go out mm, the old collar here comes Lupin's collar You should take the hames, these are the hames, off the collar. But I don't, because I'm too lazy. It'd probably be easier if I did. Right, through the rope, through the collar, and it goes on upside down. Um, Put her head through and hold it up, and then you turn it round and marry part of her neck and settle it down, make it nice and comfy. Make sure her mane's out so that it's not pulling. And the uh, once the horse is fully grown, it then has a collar made for it, and up until then. Um, you know, they have, they're, they're developing, so you've got, you know, I use other collars. But once they're six, they have their own collar made for them. It's very, very important that the collars fit properly. So it must fit nicely down there on the shoulder, because that's what she's going to be pulling on. And then room there so that it doesn't press on her windpipe so she can breathe. <laughs> That's important, isn't it, Luke? Yes. There we are. Well, as we're going chain harrowing, this is the type of harness we'll use. Now, what happened in 1972, when I first started working with horses, I hadn't got anything. I bought the first horse off a second-hand car dealer and um, so people gave me harness and some of this is still the stuff that was given to me so you can see it's just been patched and mended and it's very functional right so you put that on and then put the crupper on Lupin's a bit shy about having this done so she clamps her tail down so you have to be very careful. Oops, otherwise I can't get... There we are. Now this, this is what I do with the chains. Drop a couple of links. I'll show you why in a minute. Put it on like that. And then, see these are all very strictly functional, these little old clips.
Now you see these are strictly working bridles and you'll see later there are other bridles. Oh, what's happened here? Oh, that's it. Right, near side again. Now we, we haven't, uh, we have a slightly unusual way of putting Lupin's bridle on because of, of a little habit she's got. She doesn't like having the bit, she only likes having the bit put in this particular way. So we put it over like that and make it all comfy around her ears. Then we hmm, do the throat lash up like that and then we just thread the bit through and there's the safety catch on that. See? That just flops to and fro. And the working bits are just terribly simple bars. They're not um, when they're doing this type of work and they're disciplined and know what they're doing, they 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 need very little control anyway. And it's exactly the same process as we did with Lupin. work. That's right. Put them together in the safety knot like that. Stand. So they walk even. One there, that there. And the safety knot again. And from there, back to little Leo. Don't eat the ropes. He's being a baby. He eats everything. Darling, put it down, please. Put it down. Put it down. Let go. Let go. No, let go. Put it down. See, I, there's no point. You'd, you'd only upset a young horse by getting unpleasant about him doing things like that because he'll grow out of that. He's eaten quite a lot of things, really. But I... Come over here, Loops. Whoa. Now, I 
as I've said before, stand running, stand, 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 stand quite still, not stand still. But um, when you're dealing with horses as big as this, I really do think the most important command is stand still. And wherever you put them, they stay there. And that, you know, does take some teaching, really. So, um, let's see if they do. So I can just pop that no, no, sweetheart, go back. And to teach them, well, now stand, 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 now stand still, is that you just keep putting them back. If they move, you put them back to where they were. on first. Now these horses are well trained so I can work them on my own. But 
if they if you weren't experienced and you weren't sure you know you should have someone at the horse's head Now we're ready now. Right, walk on. Walk on. Go on, walk on. G back. Go on. Go on, G back. G back. G back. G back. Now you can see they know those commands. well and in different districts they have different words for left and right but they get to learn things very quickly the rainfall is extremely high up here and although the soil is free draining it washes the nutrients out rather quickly and we have used calcified seaweed, which is uh, ground up seashells, which just brings a certain lime content to this acid soil. And uh, we're not allowed to use that anymore um, if you're on the ESA scheme. And uh, without the ministry's permission. So Lucan and Leo's mother was in foal, and I've been here two years. Now she's reabsorbed the foal, and it's probably nature's way of saying she wasn't getting enough trace elements. So now I feed her, and they all get it actually, um, seaweed. And I find their coat shine. And it probably just gives them a mineral, the mi natural mineral supplement, which may well be missing on this. Some of the things not, might be missing for them on this pasture. We've one part of the farm is marsh, uh, sort of wetland, and when it was a dairy farm, it was famous for its cream. And if it dries up in the summer, the cattle used to go down to Alex Marsh and it's full of rare plants which the cattle also find um, they like. Be back. Steady, steady, steady. Steady.
come back a bit. Back and stand still. Stand. That's a good lad. Now we we'll need the weapons here. And I think we've done quite enough. Leo, don't knock her about. Walk on. You see the blackness up there on the tour behind the farm? Well, that's called swaling, S-W-A-L-I-N-G. And uh, so much of the moor is done every year before the end of March. And it uh, feeds the burnt top and bracken and so on, feeds the soil, kills the ticks, which obviously are, are very nasty for the animals, uh, and helps rejuvenate the grass for the spring and burns the heather so it doesn't get too big and, and coarse and then the animals can feed and also on the, the gorse. And if one didn't do that, the moor would be totally covered in the gorse and there'd be no feed for the animals up there. Are they mates, these two? Yeah, yes, they love each other. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And horses are very gregarious creatures anyway. Um, of course, foot, darling, foot, foot, foot. Come on, you great dindu thing. Foot, that's it. Um, they're a herd animal, and the reason you must be kind but firm is that they, they just want to find out where they are in the pecking order, or where you are. So they'll be assertive, uh, and you've actually got to assure them that you're higher than them in the pecking order. and. Their only form of defence is flight. So that's why they bolt. Something really frightens them. They, the only way they can defend themselves is to run away from whatever's frightened them. So they have to be taught not to be frightened of things. For instance, you know, you teach them to get tangled in the chains so that they're not frightened if it does happen. They, but Lupin, 
uh, she, when the man breaking her tangled her in the chains, she, said, she looked round and she says, now what can I do to help? Because she's always been such a confident child and so, and loves her humans. But you have to teach them all those sort of things. She doesn't like those um, huge whistling um, um, kites. She's frightened of those. But that's about the only thing. No, no, don't push. And what we'll do, don't, darling, is come here. That's the bearing rain. No. Just put, stand still and not to move. Mm. He's the most passionate kisser, this horse. <laughs> Presses his nose down on you. Hey. All right, now I get you. Good boy. You're a good girl. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Your mum's best girl. Mm -hmm. I should really put the rope round their neck so they don't run off. She puts her head down to have her bridle off. He hasn't learnt to do that yet. But he will. Just so obliging, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Right, put that. There we are, and I'll tie you up. Come. Whoa. Whoa. Just very, very good, this young horse didn't move. I, now that, that's a huge improvement. It's a, you were very clever, yes. Look, look, he's a great sloppy thing he is. Because uh, normally he would have followed his sister, but he's, he's learning that he wasn't asked to move, so he must stand till he is asked to move. So that was very, very good, yes. Look at this great sloppy look on his face. A great sloppy thing. Yes, you are. You are. Look. <laughs> Come here then. Come on then. Come on. When I bought this uh, place, it was derelict and had been for 12 years. And it didn't have a roof and had no utilities. And so we've, um, we haven't quite finished, but it's very comfortable now. We just made a filter to stop the frogs coming down the pipe in the, in, in, in the water. You do? You do want to drink, do you? Come here then.
Tiny boy. I think that's probably enough, Leo. See how tall he is? It's just impossible. But his father <coughs> wasn't popular in the Shah world because he threw such big foals and also nearly always a black leg and they want four white legs but this business you see Leo was 12 hands when he was born much too big it makes for difficulties folding and everything walk on then walk on walk on daytime and uh, <clears throat> we'll just go past them quietly because they're all near to carving Go 
dogs. Hi dogs. As William's a stallion, we don't tend to take him out of the pen without putting a, a bit in his mouth. Because obviously, at this time of the year, it's uh, his sort of breeding season coming up, and uh, he gets a bit of a handful if he thinks there's going to be a mare around the corner, which of course there is one in the other barn. So we we'll just play it safe and put this one on. Oh, William. William is um, eight this year. We bought him at Reading almost exactly two years ago today at a sale and uh, we brought him back and put our eight mares to him that year and then in the August we broke him and he's actually become one of our best sort of horses for, for work, especially forestry work. He's very, very steady and uh, he's the sort of horse you can not work for a day or two and then pick him up out of his pen again and he'll go and do anything. He's just good at job, really. Oh yeah. Right. Well. There's a mare in the bar, so it's all quite exciting, isn't it, William? Come oh, on, put your head in there, it's not a pain. There we go, that's his collar. Takes the weight of the shafts. Come on, we'll over. Oh um, this part's called the bricksing, which he uses to back the cart or hold the cart back down a hill with a load on. 
And I'm afraid there's the ever useful baler cord, which has been on here for many years, so it seems to work very well. Just ties the top on. His girth. Right, well. so. There's not a lot of people these days actually use their horses for work, is there? Um, not so many. Plenty that have them for show and um, uh, taking them to shows and playing matches, but uh, not many people that'll, you know, hitch a horse up and actually go and do their everyday work with them. We try and do as much as we can with them. Things are all here. We've always got plenty of horses to break, so. Um, it fits in well with, with that part of things. Well, that's his pad and bridging on. Um, next, we want his bridle. Black bridle. been told that the words stand still mean a lot to these horses but I should imagine it means very little when there's uh, a mare in season. Uh, not a lot, no. They, although, no, that's not very fair. They they do know um, what's right and wrong as far as mares are concerned. Um, you know, you do have to drum into them right from the word go what they can and what they can't do. We have a, an American plough made by the Amish shop in the shed and with that one on, on good ground and three horses on you can do nearly three acres a day. So, um, you know, there's all sort of different ways of doing things and uh, the Americans of course think nothing of hitching a dozen horses together and put them on a four furrow plough and, and, uh, and obviously plough, you know, nearer ten acres a day on good ground. Just put the lines on. He's ready there. That's where I was brought up, and uh, uh, we always had riding horses and ponies as children. And when I was about 11 years of age, uh, I spied my grandfather's old work harness on pegs in the old harness room on the farm. And uh, I got that down and cleaned it up and had the collars and the pads done up. And uh, that started a long interest, really. Um, uh, very shortly I was collecting old farm carts and wagons and then uh, having left uh, Berkshire College of Agriculture, having done a one year course there, I went off to Canada for, for three years and uh, worked on a ranch with heavy horses with Persians and Appaloosas and uh, well, we did a lot of the work with the horses, all the feeding was done with a pair or four horses in the winter and then we did quite a lot of uh, um, field work in the summer with them and so uh, that sort of, um, I suppose, laid down my great interest in them. And when I came back to England, I decided that uh, I wanted to, well, William, I wanted to work with, with heavy horses. So that's what started us off with our own and then breaking other people's, which I did a lot of when I was over there. Come on, William. William, come on. <laughs> He's now getting fidgety. Come on, William, go back a step. Right. That's fine. Come on. 
Just come up a step. Will you? Up a step. The reins into the back of the cart. It's always handy to have the, the reins in the cart before you pitch them in and then if anything happens and they walk off, at least uh, you don't look rather silly with a horse going down the road without any uh, any reins on it. So, uh, put on the tug chain which obviously is the means by which the horse pulls the actual cart along um, and it's attached onto the hames which in turn is attached onto the collar and this is the part that pulls the cart. I'm going to put on the what we call the ridge chain which in a minute is going to go on there. Um, that's the part of the um, harness that obviously helps hold the William, we just have to come up a step, up a step, up a step. Whoa. The whole thing, boy. Put the shaft up on the horse's back, and that takes the the load of the, the cart, as it were. Having put on the um, the back chain or the ridge chain onto the cart pad, we put the bridging chain on onto the back of the cart here. Now this this system here enables the horse to hold the cart back going downhill. Um, and actually help the horse to back the cart. When the horse pushes into this, obviously it's pushing on the shafts and in turn the cart. So I'll just go around the other side and do the same thing. Oh well. Um, we then, oh, should be about there. Let's just drop that on another one. We've got very steep hills around here, so uh, it's fairly imperative this is about right. So, actually, we've had this on another horse, so we'll just show you. We're just going to sneak this one up a, a hole here and uh, just get this bridging up a little bit more. Could be just a bit higher, really. In fact, let's just go up to that one. It's very important that the horse is comfortable. It is, that's right. It's like us, you know, going and running a race and then, uh, you know, our shoes aren't uh, a good fit. It's pretty uncomfortable. So, from there, we put that one on there. Now that looks better. Better. I'm afraid with breaking so many horses, this harness is constantly on different horses, so every time I want to use it for my own, I then have to readjust it all. But anyway, he's in there now, um, and all that remains now is to put a few bales of hay in to take up to a handful of cows in the car up the road. Peculiar way of life, this then, Fiona. Well, yes, uh, it's certainly very different to, to other ways of life, but uh, we look on it as a privilege that we can work together, earning our living um, with the horses, and that we can actually do something that we enjoy to, to earn our keep. Um, and we're fortunate that we have a lot of people coming um, to see us bringing horses, um, so there's not the, the solitude of maybe just farming on our own. Um, and wonderful for the children to grow up um, in this situation. It's a bit like turning the clock back. We'd be doing this sort of thing the turn of the century, wouldn't they? They would, but I think we've, we've turned it into a, um, a viable proposition by using modern machinery um, and utilising the fact that people need horses to work again and want them, um, that we are able to, to, to make our way of life.
we've had a load up today with all of us. Come on, William. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. We don't normally cut up the horses around, but sometimes up these hills are short. Canter up the hill just helps them get the cart up. As long as they know when to go quietly at the other end, once they're up on top of the hill. They look healthy, Jonathan. Yeah, they're fine. They've all been out all winter, so they've, they've lost a bit of condition, but uh, they'll soon pick it up now. Yeah, the right time of the year now. Right away. Just spread the hay out a little bit. It just stops them all trying to eat the same bit and fighting. There we go. There we go. So what are the future for these animals then? Um, I think fairly good. There's a lot of interest in, in the heavy horses in general. Um, I think possibly people going to use them on a farm is going to be limited, but I think there's a good scope for them in forestry, on steep banks and so on. Um, there are many more people pulling out timber with horses now than uh, say five years ago. And that's our biggest call now, um, forestry work with the horses. Um, and our, of course our main business is, is breaking them and we seem to have no shortage of uh, people wanting their horses broken and I think we have about 24, 25 a year now so um, that's built up very well That's it all William um, That's just uh, that's it. There you go, William. Stand still. Whoa. No, there you go. Always keen to go, William. Whoa. Stand. Oh, 
be very proud you know bringing him up from a youngster and getting the work what you're getting out of him now um yeah it's very rewarding i'm very pleased with how he's turned out he's turned out better than i ever thought he would um i just had a hunch when i saw him there in the sail ring that he he just would be quite a nice little horse for work and uh, he's really turned out very well i mean his worst habit is now he's, here we are in april and it's the spring and he, he'd be very glad to find a mare or two to serve and so uh, he just gets a bit fidgety then but it's, it's nothing he's all sort of guff really there's no no harm in him back a step William back and of course you couldn't get a better reference than William really for other people who want their horses back. that's right um we've actually uh, I have to say before William we've got uh, um two other bay horses that we've had for years Samson would be 17 now and uh he's done a lot of work I, I would think he's had well well over um, 150 colts hitched to him in his life different young horses and he's superb because he's he's big he's 18 hands um, he's very very easy um, nothing frightens him and uh, if the colt doesn't behave itself he just turns around and gives it a big bite on the neck and that usually sorts them out um, we believe very much in putting young horses in between two older horses and really as long as they're tied in correctly and you mustn't let anything break you've got them then and the horses will do half the breaking for you take them out in the field and give them some hard work and uh, give them an hour at that and they'll they'll soon come and that actually is the easiest way to break them because to be quite honest if a horse this size wants to go anywhere you honestly aren't going to stop it um, but if it's within in between two other horses that are confident and you know obviously working happily that horse will pick up the vibes from it or from the other two horses William so um, that's what we like to do and then we progress on to road work and so on and they work in a pair and very often we put them in a four horse team as well to see how they go in that and uh, yes, by the time they finish they're usually fairly sensible horses hopefully
that. Okay. All right, William. Just come there. Come Just give William his lunch, a little bit of hay here, and uh, I'll keep him quiet for a minute. All right, and I think that concludes William's work for this morning. He can have a break now. Get on, eat his hay. I think we'll go and have our lunch as well.